we are going to be listening to Dr. Ray Kisses, who has just been blessing me throughout. I'm not quite sure about others, but with me, I was very, very blessed for us to be able to like know that we serve a different God. We serve a God that always knows. So there is no way that you can be able to run away from him. But the best way that you can be able to do is to run to him. Over to you, Dr. Ray Kisses. Thank you so much, Sister Lulu. I'm very grateful for this opportunity and you have a very nice background. I like it. Uh, may God bless you so much. Uh, allow me to thank all of you for being faithful members of the prayer ministry and being an encouragement to me. I would like to bring this word to you today. It is titled, If You Want It Again, Do It Again. If You Want It Again, Do It Again. Father in heaven, make this message simple and clear for all of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you want it again, do it again. Judges chapter 16, verse 28. Samson is about to do his last assignment and die. The Bible says, then Samson prayed to the Lord. Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more. Other version says, one more time. And let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson was once a feared strongest man, but he lost it. Samson did wonders in his past, but now he couldn't. Samson's best years seemed to be behind him. Nothing was currently good for Samson. Samson was in a situation where he needed presently what he had had in his past. And the message we share with you today is if you want it again, then do it again. If you want that which was in your past and is no longer in your present, then do it again. And so Samson realizing that the best was behind him, the worst was with him, and yet he needed that which he had in the past, Samson prayed and asked God to grant him the strength he had in the past. Samson asked God to do it one more time. You see, Samson had always thought that the source of his strength was his hair. Samson had always thought that the source of his strength was his muscle. But when the hair was shaved and the spirit of the Lord left him, he was captured, his eyes were removed, and he was now a blind man. And Samson, sitting in prison, recounted his past and discovered that his strength came from the Lord and not from the hair that he had. The hair was only a link, a symbolism of his connection with God, but actually the strength came from God. And Samson discovered that even though my hair has grown, if God does not favor me, I'm not going anywhere. And ladies and gentlemen, it is good I pause here to remind you that we also have important things like hair in our lives. But that hair is not the entire secret of strength. The secret of our strength is God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we read the Bible, the Bible that is not made of magic spells where if you read things happen abracadabra and things happen, no. You search the scriptures thinking there is life, but in them they testify about him who is life. When we read scripture, it connects us to him who is life. It is not that the words of scripture uh, translate life into us. 
Similarly to prayer, ladies and gentlemen, it is not every prayer that is useful. It is the one we pray to. Two men went to pray. One prayed a long theological complex prayer referring to his tithing and his fasting and his goodness. Another one prayed a simple prayer of somebody without much education. Have mercy on me, O Lord. And God heard the prayer of the simple person. Because the prayer is not about the complexity of the words used and the posture you take, maybe kneeling or prostrating down or, you know, crawling down, covering yourself in, in ashes and wearing, you know, uh, wearing sacks. No, prayer is about your connection to the one who answers prayer. And that's where the power. And so Samson discovered what we all need to discover, that Bible study, that prayer are just like hair. They are important. If you shave them, then God lives your life. If you shave them, if you stop studying the Bible, if you stop praying, then you cut your connection with God. And so the lack of power is not because you didn't read the Bible, but because you are not connected to God who gives you power. And so Samson discovered that though I have hair, I still need God to empower me. And though I'm studying the Bible, I still need God. Though I'm praying, I still need God. And Samson went to that pillar, those pillars. He, he realized he has hair. He realized he still has muscle, but he said, I need God. And we need to reach a point where we don't turn prayer and Bible study into idolatry, where your Bible study has now become your idol or your prayer has become the idol. We must reach a point where we realize that there is a God we are trying to connect to when we study the Bible. There is a God we are trying to connect to when we pray. And that is the God we should focus on and not this activity that connects us to God. The same switch in your house that brings in light and power in the sockets will be useless when there is no power flowing in from the government lines. If God does not send power, those switches in our houses are the prayer and Bible study and church attendance. They mean nothing unless God flows the power into that building so that when you switch it on, lights come. So that when you read the Bible, you actually get revival. Without God sending that power, the switches in our house are useless. The prayer, the Bible study, the church attendance, the fasting all mean nothing unless there is God. And so Samson discovered that I need to talk to God. Having hair is not enough. Having Bible study is not enough. Having, having to pray is not enough. I need to talk. I need God himself to do it. He realized it's about God. And so Samson asked God to do it one more time. When you pray for one more time, you are acknowledging that God did it the first time. That's why you tell God, do it one more time. You are actually saying, last time you did it for me. Now I'm asking you, do it again. If you don't say one more time, maybe you think that last time it was you who did it. But when you know that it is God who did it the last time, you now come and say, dear God, why don't you do it one more time? You acknowledge that without God, it will not be possible. And so you say, God, one more time. Because if you don't do it, I'm not able. Samson realized that even though he has hair, even though he has muscle, unless God does it, it will not be possible. So Samson asked God for one more time. And I just came to tell you, friends, that if you want it again, then do it again. So I want to ask you, did you mess up like Samson? You see, Samson messed up, dated the wrong girls, of a foreign country, and then now it stopped his, he cut off his hair, just like some of us stop Bible studies, stop attendance of fellowship, stop praying so the hair is gone, and so we are weak spiritually, so our hairs are gorged out. Did you mess up like Samson? I just came to tell you, ask God for one more chance.
If you messed up like Samson, ask God for one more chance. The prodigal son had asked his father for everything and he went and he messed up. He said, I will go back to my father. And the prodigal son was going for one more time. I'm asking you, if you have messed up, ask God for one more chance. Did you squander your opportunity? All is not lost. Ask for it one more time. If you want it again, the message is simple, then do it again. Samson prayed again for one more chance. I want to challenge you, my friends, pray again for your health. Pray again for your spiritual life. Pray again for your finances. Pray again for your relationships. Pray again for your studies. Whether you messed up or not, you need to pray again. Whether it's just another chance you need, I'm challenging you to pray again. If you didn't get an answer, pray again. Samson says, God, one more time. And I'm challenging you to pray again. Do not give up on God. Pray again. Don't look for alternatives and say that I've prayed it's not working, then now you go to Zion Christian Church for prayers, or you go to another church, or you go to some, to some Catholic priest for prayer, or you end up to some Pentecostal prophet or bishop, don't give up on God. Pray again. Your prayer has not been answered, don't go to a witch, pray again. Don't turn to crime, pray again. Don't give up and throw your hands up. Pray again. Don't look for any other alternative. Pray again. I just came to challenge you, my friends, that pray without ceasing. Pray again. If you want it again, then do it again. Our dear Heavenly Father, help us to do it again. Help us to pray again. And when we ask for one more time, forgive us for the wasted past and grant us one more time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.